these pieces have been complete for a while, but we weren't allowed to hang them, I'm assuming because the hospital was not yet in possession of the building, but now we've been released. So here we go. Oh, <laughs> this is the morning. This is hanging day. A little anxiety, a little happiness. Let's see how it goes. We have to go take a safety video before we're allowed in. <laughs> this is the back of the hospital. Pretty impressive building. Trading in our driver's licenses for our entry tag so we can get in. So the first step of the day, once we were allowed in the building, was to mount the hanging frames on the wall. Now these things, I made the hanging frames and I made the embed frame that's in the back of the um, sculpture itself of the relief. And even though I tried, they're not exactly the same. So what I did was I, I numbered them and before we pull, pulled the relief out of the mold, put the frame in place, and I measured back from the sculpture six inches all the way around and put a Sharpie mark on this uh, wall frame. So I know wherever we hang the wall frame, the art is gonna, the finished part, the part you see is gonna be six inches from the Sharpie. So that really made this a lot easier so the first decision was how high in the niche to place the art. And we ended up putting it just a little bit higher than halfway. There's a little bit of a bigger gap at the bottom than the top. And obviously side to side, it just needs to be in the middle. So once we decided on uh, where to put it, uh, all we had to do was measure down from the top of the niche to the Sharpie mark and do that on the next two to get the height right. And then side to side, they just need to be centered. So it turned out to be fairly easy locating them. The reliefs weigh about 120 pounds each. It's kind of hard to tell exactly what they weigh, and they're not all the same. I was using number eight screws. So I figured four screws would hold it easily. I drilled 20 holes in the frame. So we have plenty of safety factor. And also, if for some reason you can't get some of the screws in, it's okay because you have plenty of extra. And that turned out to be the case, actually. Per our request, the contractor uh, put three quarter inch plywood behind the sheetrock. So it's almost idiot proof. Wherever you put a screw, you get good purchase, but not a hundred percent. There were a few um, metal objects, maybe steel beams or something where I couldn't get the screws, but uh, 16 was the least number that I could get. So I'm look really confident that these things are not going anywhere. So we go back to security, trade in our badges for our driver's licenses, and head home to the studio, which luckily was uh, probably less than four miles. And Fred and I can pick up the relief and lower it to the floor without an issue, really. Um, these things are pretty tough, but I'm a little leery of rocking them around on a concrete floor. For the, they might chip. They're kind of hard. And then we... Um, we got them rolled onto my little crappy dolly, which I didn't want to bring to the hospital. So um, a good friend loaned me a brand new one to haul them in the halls of the hospital to make sure we didn't damage the floors. We just rolled it over onto the dolly. It was fairly easy when I can keep my lovely wife from doing the wrong thing. She tends to want to pull when she should be pushing and lift when she should be lowering. I'm constantly fussing at her. Here she's holding it up when we were trying to go down when she really should be holding the dolly. But it all worked out good, safe and sound on the dolly with the padded back and the padded um, bottom to the dolly. And it's a matter of rolling it out to the truck with uh, without dropping it. Okay, you got that in, Freddie? So we had fabricated a sheet of plywood with some guides and end of the truck so if we had to slam on the brakes it would hit something soft and then we screwed down a little brace on behind each relief and this uh, really worked well we could slide them in and out without struggle and you might not have noticed it but just a few seconds ago in the video Rini actually was filming and simultaneously moving the buggy out the way very impressive she never ceases to amaze me Okay, back at the hospital, we go back and trade in our driver's licenses for our tag so we can get in, we'll get our little dolly and bring it to the truck. 
and pretty much just do the opposite of what we did at the house and worked up works it's been working good we'll pull it out stand it up on the edge and set it on the dolly and then we uh then i gotta go park the truck away from the loading gate and we roll it on in the in the hospital I really need about four inches above the sill of this niche to get the um, little jack under it because this thing's way too heavy to pick up at that weird angle where you can't get on each side of it. But it's kind of tough to flip up also, so we kind of compromised. I put a two by four and a piece of cardboard down and got the relief of vertical. And from there, we used a um, pry board and lots of little shims to pick it up and get it over four inches so we can slide the little jack under it. So I know it probably seems kind of primitive, but the plan was to use a board to pry it up. Um, and it worked really well. I had a bucket full of all kind of different shims. So we got it up to four, a little over four inches and slid the jack under it. And then what was not planned was that, um, I had planned on using the battery drill to raise and lower the jack, but it wouldn't fit. There wasn't physically enough room. We didn't bring a ratchet, and um, the jack is was too hard to turn by hand when it was in the lowered position. So what we did, we just used the teeter-totter board, and I kind of gently pushed up on it while somebody took the slack out of the jack by hand, just turning the knob. And once it got up a couple of inches, I guess the jack has a better uh, mechanical advantage when the when the scissor part is taller, and then we could just turn it by hand. And on the second two reliefs, when we went back home, I, I brought a ratchet with us, so that solved that problem. And I come from a heavy construction background where there's always a backup safety plan. And for us, the plan was to keep setting blocks under the outside edge of the relief as the jack lifted it in case the jack were to fail or fall over or something. The, the relief couldn't fall far because we always had blocks under it. And so once it starts going up with the jack, it's uh, basically you have to we have to go up higher than the... Um, brackets that are going to hold it so it can go over the top of the little of the little bracket so it needs to go about an inch higher than where it's going to be and then we need to push it to the wall which is a little um scary because it's you're like you're trying to turn the jack over but you have to hold it to the wall top and bottom and hold it tight and then gradually lower the jack and that then the little brackets lock the little brackets between the wall bracket in the back of the relief and you can feel it as it goes down it gets sucked toward the wall so that's always a good feeling when that happens uh, we lower the jack a little more and then we grab the top of the relief and yank it out to make sure it's really set and same with the bottom and once we're confident that all eight of the little catches are locked in place we just remove the jack and that's that we just repeated that for the other two um, the second two were easier because we had one, the learning curve behind us, and also because we had a ratchet to operate the, the scissor jack. Okay, so this one has the ratchet handle, so we're no longer on the first one. Uh, I think this is the second one. Well, I know this is the second one. I was just trying to pick the better pieces of video, but um, this is how we did it. The jack would uh, lift it up without a problem. Fred's job was to just make sure it didn't fall over frontwards. He wasn't struggling or anything. He was just there. And as we went up, we kept stacking blocks either side. Um, at some point, I would climb the ladder, and I can feel the um, top brackets. I can tell where they were high enough to go over the bracket and then start coming down. We gotta get over it. And then oh, you gotta go over. You need
You okay, Fred? So at this point, um, because the top of the relief has touched the sheetrock wall, I know we're over the little bracket and we're high enough. Now that kind of a hard part is scooting the bottom closer to the sheetrock. It's uh, the weight is resting on the carpet on that little jacket and didn't want to slide, so really had to kind of force it against the wall. But again, we can reach our fingers around the corners. And if the relief is touching the wall or very close to it, I know we've uh, come high enough. We're over our little metal brackets. So then we uh, just lower it down and wiggle it and make sure we're caught everywhere. <clears throat> you can tell, you can hear the metal on metal when you start coming down and it catches. It's grabbed. It's grabbed. Okay, come on down. Go down some more. Mm -hmm. I can see it pulling into the wall. As I go down? Yep. Just probably turn it by hand then. Just free now. Turn, turn this? Yeah. Just free. All right. We're good. It's up? Mm hmm. You ain't going to bottom for as hard as you can? I won't hold them. You got it, huh? Yep. Okay. Just need to fly it in the middle. So when the first one installed, um, we go back and turn in our badges and get our driver's licenses and drive home and get number two and go back to the hospital and turn in our driver's licenses and get our badges and hang it the same way. <clears throat> and we repeat for the third one. So, so at this point, the angst was uh, mostly gone. We just kind of had a good time. They, they all went up, looked like we knew what we were doing. Um, the rest of the day was pleasant, nothing but compliments on the art. Um, Debbie finally relaxed a little bit, and it was a good day.
this story has a happy ending. They're up safe and sound. They look good. They fit. And we couldn't have done it without our longtime buddies, Fred and Rini. Thank you, guys.